Hello, namaste. I'm Jennifer and this is Lunch Hour Yoga. I will be giving you a 45 minute class here, hopefully to just give you a little break in your day, whether it's morning, afternoon, or a little later for you, depending on your time zone. I'm just gonna move a bit, breathe a bit, get our mind calm and centered to act as a little reset, a little pause in the day. I'm gonna work on some some strengthening as well. So we can just get that fiery energy within us as well. So if we're needing to get a little motivated to continue through your day or start your morning. So we are going to start lying down. So come lying down on your back. we we'll take a Supta Baddha Konasana. So once you're lying down, open your knees wide, bring the soles of your feet together. One of my favorite postures to start in just allows a nice opening to the hips. If you have any tenderness to the low back with this, you might wanna put support under your knees or your thighs and keeping the knees a little higher will then help relieve a little bit of that arch or strain in the low back. Otherwise, just relaxing in here. And let's bring the arms down by the sides of the body with the palms facing up and allow the shoulders to open. Feel a gentle lift to your heart. Then close your eyes and allow yourself just to come into stillness here. So let go of any movements or fidgets in the body. It's also let go of any action in the mind. So whatever's occupying your mind, let it go, let it dissolve away and bring your focus and your attention inward and connect to your breath. Just take a few rounds of your own natural breath, just kind of observing how your breath feels without any judgment or analyzing or thinking it should be differently, just a simple awareness. And then we'll start deepening the breath together here. Take a nice big breath in through the nose and allow that inhale to fill up your chest, your diaphragm, your lungs. And then exhale out of your mouth. Just feeling a nice release, letting go of any tension or stress or whatever is occupying the mind. Let's do two more of these. Nice deep breath in the nose. Again, filling up here. Feel like you're creating an expansion space within. Open mouth, exhale. Again, just relaxing and letting go. One more time, drawing a deep breath in. And as you exhale again, just think of anything that you might want to release or free from and exhale it out. Now keeping the breath inward, same deep breath in the nose. Now breathing out of the nose, feel that breath move through every inch of your body. And we'll keep this going for a few more rounds. See if you can start to cultivate now an equal length to your inhale and your exhale, moving internally. So helping to draw our mind inward to, again, disengage from all the external, all the work, all the life, life stuff that is, and just give yourself this time to be fully present in the practice, in your body, in each moment as it exists. When you allow yourself to become present, to take these pauses in your day, Again, it acts as a reset. So then when you go back to whatever you are doing, often you can have a new mindset, a new perspective with the shift you've made within yourself. And just focus on three more rounds of a nice, deep, slow breath pattern. Feel your body opening up here, tension dissolving. Any stress releases. All right. Go ahead and draw your knees together now. Once you pull your knees together, I'd like you to separate your feet to about the outside edges of the mat. And then open your arms out nice and wide. Palms can be up or down, but allowing the shoulders and the spine to ground. With the feet wide and knees together, begin to shift your knees side to side, creating a windshield wiper effect. And just bring a release into the inner hips and a little bit of movement into the low back here. Allow your body to move with your breath still.
And now next time the knees move left, let your knees fall all the way down to the left side. Try to keep your feet separated, unless that's too much for your back. Then you could bring the back knee closer to the front knee or maybe put a pillow under that knee. Otherwise, letting that right knee, that right thigh soften towards the ground will feel an opening into the low back and into the front hip and quad. If you wanna feel more, try wiggling that right knee even farther back. Or another option could be placing left foot on top of right knee and then maybe deepening that way. Try not to take anything that causes strain in your body, but just allows a nice opening. Now let's turn our head over to the right shoulder. And then just relax here, breathe deeply. Feel maybe a little opening to the left side of the neck. And then return to the long, deep breaths if you lost that breath and feel that this release is moving into your spine, your hip, or anywhere you're feeling it in your body. And one more round of breath here. And then just gently bring the knees back up. Straighten out your spine again. It might feel good to lift the hips up and back down to neutralize. And we'll move directly to the other side. So knees will fall right. Again, keeping the feet separated, we'll feel that stretch all the way into the left quad and hip flex. If that's too much strain on your back or leg, you just bring the knees closer together or use a cushion under the knee. And again, to increase, you could move the knee farther back or maybe place the right foot on top of left knee, feeling that deepening. I'm feeling my back a little bit too much with this expression, so I'm just gonna stay with my feet down because I don't wanna cause strain. I just want to allow my body to open with wherever it's at today and in this moment. And then allow yourself just to tune back into your breath. Allowing that breath to move through every part of the body here, but especially any areas where you're feeling intensity or any resistance, just softening there. And one more round of breath. And then go ahead and bring the knees back up. Once the knees are lifted, let's pull the knees all the way into the chest now. Wrap your arms around your knees, but if that causes you to curl your body up, you might want to grab the thighs instead. I'm going to keep the head and shoulders down. You want to keep the low back grounded as well. And just the tiniest little rock side to side. You can explore how big these are so that they don't cause you to fall over or again, strain anything. Just feeling like a gentle massage into the low back, into the front hips and even the abdomen. All right, we're gonna fire up our core here starting out right away. So just flex the feet a bit, keeping the knees over the chest, just feeling an activation to the legs. Uh, pull the low belly in as deeply as you can. We want to reduce the arch of the low back, especially when we start extending our legs forward. Now, arms will be on the mat by the sides of the body, pressing down firm through the arms and shoulders. And if you want extra support, you can slide your hands under your hips. That will help you keep the spine grounded and navel in. Now, as you inhale, pull the right knee in more as you extend your left leg forward. Now, you might be able to hover towards the ground. If that causes any tension in the back. Just keep that leg higher on an angle. As you exhale, switch completely. Pull the left knee in and extend the right leg forward. Find the range for you. We keep alternating inhale, switch, and exhale, switch. Breathing in and out of the nose. If you prefer, you can breathe out of the mouth. I want to keep the low belly drawn in the whole time and feel that the action and the strength is coming right there deeply into your navel and core. If you're feeling any strain in the low back, again, keep the legs a little higher and maybe the movement's smaller. We don't want to not achieve the benefits we're going for here. And then just keep going on your own. You can move a little quicker if you want to feel a little more energized or slower if you wanna be super mindful about the movements, the action, and where the action is coming from. Make sure you're breathing, try not to hold the breath, and just keep pulling that navel in deeper and deeper. So really getting that fired up strength and energy. The action of the knees pulling in as well helps us to just stimulate our digestion, digestion as well. So if you have any issues there, this will help release and free up. Just try a few more rounds. If you need a break, take a break.
I'd like you to count out five more. Moving at your own pace. If you're moving super slow, you might not do a full five. Just take one more round. And then you'll finish with the knees back to the chest. Again, wrapping around the tops of the shins or under the thighs. A couple more little rock side to side. So if you've got any tension in the back through that, just massage it back out. You might have felt a little bit in the hip flexors here. So let's open up into a happy baby of your choice. You can keep the hands to knees, maybe just grab the backs of the thighs, or you can reach up higher to shins or even feet possibly. Now you want to try to press that low back down again. That'll release the low back rather than curling up here. And as you continue to open the legs, also keep the shoulders and head down. So that's why sometimes holding the legs rather than feet will achieve the most beneficial posture here. Now, if it feels nice, you can rock side to side. Otherwise, just stay in the center. Continue breathing. And just move through one more round of breath. And then pull the knees back together. This time, grab under thighs. We're going to rock and roll the length of the spine. And if that bothers your spine at all, just roll to your side to come up. Otherwise, try a couple more. This helps to stimulate the nerve endings and along the spine. Feels real good for me as well. <laughs> and then we'll come up to a seat and right around onto hands and knees into a tabletop position. So in our tabletop, we want to have the hands aligned under the shoulders, the knees separated about hip distance apart. Look down at the mat and feel that length of the spine all the way through the neck as well. And then spread the fingers apart a little bit and press down through each of the fingertips, especially if you have tender wrists, this will help support there. Feel that you're pressing down into the mat, gently pulling your chest, pectoral muscles in, and the low belly in as well. Let's get some movement to breath here. Inhale, cow pose, lift your chest. Now let the belly sway, swaying the low back as well. And then exhale into a cat, tuck the belly, tuck the chin, tuck your tail under and press through the arms to round the upper back. Let's continue a few more with the breath. So deep inhale, pull the chest forward and up, let the belly drop and exhale, curl and round, tucking navel, chin in. I'd like you to move through three more rounds. Go ahead and move at your own pace. So slowly as you like, as long as your breath and movement are moving together here. Just feel the mobility you're creating through the spine, the chest, the shoulders, and even the movement and expansion at the navel. Just move through one more round here. And then settle back into a neutral spine. We're going to bring the knees all the way together now. So just narrowing the base a little bit. And then extend your left leg straight back. Flex your toes towards the ground. So if you feel that the left hip is opening, see if you can square your hips a little more. Notice if you've dipped in the belly, pull the navel in. So keeping that strong core. Now you're welcome to keep both hands down and just feel this balance and strength. Or for more, reach the right arm forward. Testing out the balance and strength. Feel a nice long energy line out the front arm and out the back leg. Breathe deeply here. And just stabilizing, holding. Body is still. The breath is flowing. Just one more breath. Now slowly bend your back knee. Reach your right hand towards your foot. If you just get a little closer you can stay there if you're able to grab the foot without straining your spine then go ahead see if you can lift your chest a little higher open up the right shoulder a little more you might even lift the leg higher as long as that's okay for spine keep the belly drawn in to support the back keeping the balance and focus and just breathe one more round of breath nice and slow as you inhale keep the balance extend the arm and leg long draw the navel in and then release, lowering the hand and the knees back down to the ground. Good. Switching it out right away, the right leg will extend. The toes are off the mat. Flex your foot strong. Pull the belly in. You're welcome to keep both hands down, just holding here, or left arm forward now. Feel the pressure in the front arm, uh, front, front hand to mat, that is, and feel the pressure in your back foot to the mat. And then feel that energy line out to your left arm and right leg. Breathe deeply. 
Keep pulling the navel in to support the spine here. And then slowly bend your back knee, reach the left hand towards your foot. Just pause when you're feeling enough before you cause any strain. Maybe you're able to grab on and then maybe you're able to lift a little higher. Even if you're not holding the foot, you can open up left shoulder, lift the chest and just stay calm and steady with the breath. One more breath here. As you inhale, slowly lengthen the arm and leg, pull the navel in again, and then exhale, lower the hand and knee back down to the mat. Widen your knees all the way to the edge of the mat now. Bring the big toes to touch and shift into child's pose. The hips will move towards the heels. If you can get all the way down, do so. If you need to stay up for your knees or hips, just stay where you need. And then arms walk forward, chest moves forward. And if the forehead can meet the mat, go there. Honor your body in any support you have or to use. Use that. That's just going to allow your body to open more rather than stay tense. So pillows can be under the hips, can be under the chest or the head here. Now breathe deeply again. Just as we felt those full inhales to the front body when we started, see if you can feel them into the back body now. So as you breathe in, filling up the back of the lungs and the diaphragm, the upper spine. And as you exhale, just soften into the hips, the chest, and the shoulders. Keep that going. Nice deep breaths in the nose, filling up. Exhaling out of the nose, softening. Two more rounds of breath. Last breath here. Then pull yourself back up onto your hands and knees into your tabletop position. Firm the arms again. Keep the navel in. Tuck your toes under and press into downward facing dog. Press your hips back as far as your body allows. Move your chest back as well. Rather than letting the elbows and the, the arms rotate open, to give a gentle hug of rotating the arms in towards the chest. This just draws strength and support into shoulders. Relax your neck and jaw and feel free to keep the knees bent as needed here so you can allow yourself to stretch out through the spine. Feel a nice energy, though, of the heels working towards the mat. Stay here. Two more deep breaths. With each breath, feeling a little more strength, opening, and support in your body. One more round of breath. Look to the top of the mat. Walk your feet all the way forward. Come into a standing forward fold. And the feet will stay separated about hip distance here. Grab onto your elbows and then let your body just hang forward. So if your body is still fairly high, try bending your knees and that might allow you to feel more relief into the low back and let the body hang a little more. Relax the neck and jaw. Let those arms and elbows just hang here. And if it feels nice, you can sway side to side. Deep, deep breaths. Great thing about yoga is... We won't focus on our mind here too. So just always tune in and notice if you're becoming judgmental of yourself. If you're not in a all the way down, just let go of any judgment. Just accept that it's okay where you're at and you're just working within your own body and your own range, uniquely you. One more breath here. Let the arms release back to the mat. Take a deeper bend to the knees. Tuck your chin in and slowly roll up through your spine moving one vertebra at a time. Once you're up, let the arms reach all the way up overhead. Bring your palms to touch and then draw your hands down at your heart and take a little pause. So whenever we're standing here in what's called Tadasana or mountain pose, legs can be apart or together, whatever gives you a stronger solid base here. So that choice is up to you. A lift of the chest, hands firm and elbows wide. Nice. Breathe deeply here and just feel the strength of the legs while the navel is engaged and the chest is lifted. We're going to move through a few sun salutations. Surya Namaskar A, moving breath to, and movement together. So inhale, sweep your arms up overhead. Bring your palms to touch and feel free to lift the chest as much as you can. And then exhale, hands through the heart center and slowly release into a forward fold. Feel free to bend the knees every time you're in your fold. Next, inhale, rise halfway up, press against the front of the legs, pull your chest forward, lengthening the spine. 
Exhale, step to a high plank. You'll step your feet all the way to the back of the mat, stack your shoulders over your wrists, and feel the heels stepped over toes. If this is too much, keep the knees down, but you want to keep the belly in, the hips and spine in one line, press down through the arms and build that strength. Let's stay two breaths. Keep drawing the navel in. Legs and arms are firm and strong. One more breath. Now as we move through first Chaturanga Dandasana, knees can be up or down here. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, you'll lower either all the way or halfway to the mat, keeping the belly in and the arms hugging the side bodies. Then flip your feet. Inhale, lift the chest up for a cobra. If you're taking up dog, the knees will be lifted here. And as you exhale, press back to a downward facing dog. Shift the hips back, move the chest back, stretch the body out. Breathe deeply. And now inhale, look back to the top of the mat. As you exhale, you can walk or hop yourself into a forward fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine, halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, stand up, sweep the arms up overhead, bringing palms to touch. And exhale, hands to heart. So we're gonna do two more rounds of this flow. Breath to movement now, picking up the pace a little bit here. Inhale, sweep the arms up, bring your palms to touch, lift the chest any amount. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, press halfway up, lengthen your spine. Then exhale, move through your Chataranga Dandasana flow, or you're welcome to skip that and go right to down dog. So slowly lowering half or all the way. Flip your feet, inhale to lift the chest, cobra or up dog. And exhale back to downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Again, inhale, look to the top of the mat and exhale, hop or walk yourself back to your forward fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine halfway up. Exhale, release forward. Inhale, stand up, bringing the arms up and the palms to touch. Exhale, hands back at the heart center. We'll do one more flow here. Really move with the breath. Inhale, rise up. Maybe you find a deeper lift here through the chest. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine, halfway lift. Exhale, Chataranga Dandasana or right to down dog. You might even try hopping to lower down if that's in your practice. Move with your breath all the way back to downward facing dog. Deep inhale, deep exhale. Now keep the arms nice and strong. Inhale, lift your right leg to the ceiling. Feel that strong action out the back heel. And then exhale, draw the knee as far forward as you can. Step your foot all the way up between your hands. We'll lower the back knee down to the ground into a lunge. We're gonna get deep into the hips with a runner's lunge. So we'll move right foot all the way to the outside edge of the mat, bringing both hands inside the right foot. This allows the hips to sink a little deeper here. So as much as you can, you might scooch that back knee farther back. Obviously, you'll stay within your range. You can stay pressed to your hands. If it's accessible, you can come down to your forearms. Or you might have a pillow there for an in-between place. Let your head and neck relax here, jaw relax, and just breathe into this deep opening in your hips. Again, don't force yourself to a place that doesn't work in your body. Our goal is just to create an opening in the hips. It's not about how low you go. Two more rounds of breath here. One more breath. Okay, now right from where you're at here, if you're down on the forearms, press back up onto your hands. We're gonna shift into a half split keeping the hands inside the right leg rather than framing the leg, hands inside. So your leg is on a slight angle out to the right. If you rotate your toes a bit right, then you're gonna feel this deeper into the outer IT band as well as hamstring. Now, if you feel like you need to have the body higher up, grab some blocks or place your hands to your shin instead. If you feel like you wanna get deeper, you can walk the arms forward and bring the chest as close to the mat as you'd like. Relax your neck and jaw here and utilize the breath. The breath is what's going to help dissolve the tension as well as keeping your mind present in this practice. Moving the breath through the body circulates that prana, the life force, oxygen, oxygenates the muscles. One more breath here. 
walk the hands back in and re-bend the front knee. Now the hands are still inside the right foot. And we're gonna reach the right arm forward and then up and around to reach behind you, straight back behind. Open up the right shoulder as we feel this twist here. You can stay right here or option to wrap your arm around your spine to the low back for a half bind. Or if it's accessible, you might bend the back knee and reach towards your foot. This can be intense in the front quad or that left quad and hip flex. So just honor your body. Continue to open up the chest here and shoulder and breathe deeply. One more breath. Release the hand back to the mat, tuck the back toes under, and let's lift the back knee. Now we'll step into our high plank, firm the body, take an inhale. Your choice to exhale right to down dog or move through a Chataranga Dandasana flow, working on your strength here. Deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Switching it out as you inhale, lift your left leg up. Again, keep pressing strong out the back heel. And as you exhale, pull your knee forward as far as you can and step your foot all the way up between your hands. Drop your back knee into a deep lunge. And then we move the front foot to the outside edge of the mat again. So both hands are inside the front foot for this runner's lunge or also called lizard here. Really getting deeply into the hips. Find your expression so you can stay on your hands, maybe come down to elbows or have a pillow as an in-between point. Relax your neck and especially your jaw here. And just focus on breathing. Allow your yoga practice to feel good. How can you allow it to feel good rather than focusing on where you think you should be? or any discomfort you might be feeling. One more breath here. Press yourself back up onto your hands. If you're not there, right from here, we shift the hips back and straighten the front leg. Hands stay inside the left leg. The left leg is on a slight angle outward here. Maybe even turning the toes a bit more left to give it that nice stretch into the outer leg and uh, uh, glute muscle. So again, you might need to be higher on the shin or blocks, or if you're able to go deeper, just find the range that gives you a nice stretch and opening. And then relax as much as you can. Anywhere you might be feeling tension, relax there. Breathe there. One more breath. And then go ahead and shift yourself back into your runner's lunge again. So hands are inside the left foot. Reach your left arm forward this time, lift up and around, open up your chest and your spine. Feel that opening to the left shoulder. If this is enough, stay here. Maybe half bind if you did first side, or if you're able to reach back and grab your foot, you might feel that deepening into the back quad and hip flex. Keep breathing here. One more breath here. And go ahead and release your foot, your hands back to the mat. We tuck the back toes under, lift up the knee. Again, step to a high plank. And you're welcome to go directly to down dog or move through the Chattaranga Dandasana flow. Moving with your breath and focusing that core strength that we built in the beginning. Breathe deeply. Look to the top of the mat again, either hop or walk yourself into a forward fold. As you inhale, lengthen the spine halfway and exhale, release forward. So now that we've opened up the hips a bit more, let's separate the feet to about the edge of the mat, turn the toes out, and we're gonna bend the knees and come into a deep squat, malasana, feeling both hips now at the same time. 
Now, rather than propping the heels up to get the hips lower, I prefer that you keep the hips up a little higher so you can keep the heels down. This gives a little different stretch. Actively press your thighs open, hands can stay down, or you might be able to bring the hands at the heart, and then elbows can gently press against the thighs to help the opening. Now see if you can lift your chest and spine more. Obviously, you'll stay at your own range. Notice if you're tensing your neck, you might even draw your chin down to release the neck and just breathe deeply here. This posture is another one of my favorites, creating a nice opening to the hips, but also it offers the test of balance and strength here. Steady focus. One more round of breath. And then release the hands back down to the mat. Straighten the legs again. Bring the feet either back to hip distance apart or all the way together. Inhale, lengthen the spine halfway. And exhale, you can step right to down dog or move through a Chaturanga Dandasana as you like. Move with your breath. Stretch out. Deep inhale. Deep exhale. Nice and slow. Inhale, right leg up again. And exhale, step the foot forward between the hands. Now keep your back heel and back knee lifted and a nice deep lunge. Strengthen the legs and slowly rise up to a crescent lunge. Lift the chest, keep the shoulders relaxed, and now firm up the legs by squeezing inner thighs together and pull the low belly in. Good, stay here, one more breath. Now open up to warrior two, plant your back heel down, keeping that right knee bent and driving forward. You might even deepen into your warrior two. Feel that the thigh is opening and a strong energy down your back leg. Widen through the arms. Take one more breath here. Now straighten the right leg, keeping those right toes pointing forward and then reach into a reverse triangle with the leg straight, right arm lifts up and back. Back arm can slide down the leg or wrap around the low back to a half bind. Keep the thighs pulled up, the feet firm, and then feel this nice opening to the right side body. And a comfortable place for your neck. Your gaze could be forward, maybe down or up. One more breath here. And then lift the body up, open the arms wide. Begin to shift your left hip back as you reach as far forward as you can with front arm. And move into a triangle now. Right arm reaches down towards the right shin, possibly a block or the ground. You want to keep your chest open, arms spread nice and wide, and strong and engaged in the core, supporting the back here. Make sure you're breathing. Stay one more breath here. And using that core strength, bring your body back up. Come back into a warrior two. Keeping the bend of the front knee, inhale, reverse your warrior now. Reach the right arm back again. Once again, find the deep side bend and maintaining a deep bend in the front leg. Back hand down the leg or into a half bind. Breathe into your body. One more inhale. This time as you exhale, you're gonna cartwheel both hands all the way back down into a lunge, picking that back heel back up, firm through the arms. Now this time as you inhale, let's reach the right leg up and back for a three-legged down dog. Now as you exhale, you can either go right to down dog or through your chataranga. Optional challenge could be keeping right leg up as you move through your flow. Move with the breath, and we meet back in down dog. Breathe deeply. All right, inhale, left leg up, keeping the arms nice and strong. And exhale, step your foot all the way up between your hands. Keep the right heel, right knee lifted. Give a little squeeze of the inner thighs, firm the back thigh, and then slowly rise up. So if you're feeling very wobbly here, again, squeeze inner thighs, feel a nice strength in both legs, but a softening into the hips, that balance of strength and release. Lift the chest, navel in, and just hold a steady gaze. One more breath here. Slowly open up to warrior two, plant the back heel down, arms open nice and wide. Drive the front knee forward, find your depth, your range, keeping left thigh open, strong energy in the back leg, and a nice widening energy out through the arms. Breathe here, one more breath. 
and then slowly straighten out your front leg. We move into reverse triangle, keeping the hips as they are. Try not to shift back for this one. Lift the left arm up and back. Reverse triangle. Feel this full stretch and length to the left side body. Right hand can be down the leg or wrapped into half bind. Again, comfortable gaze for your neck, whatever works for you. And just breathe. One more breath here. And using your core strength, lift your body back up, arms open. Now we shift the right hip back, reach as far forward as you can with left arm, then lower left arm and bring the right arm up. So you want to keep a length to the left side body, an open chest. So rather than trying to go low by coming forth, maybe stay higher so you can open wide. You can have support of hand to shin as needed. Continue to breathe as you find your range and depth. Comfortable place for the neck. Your gaze can be anywhere that serves that. One more breath here. And then using that core strength, bring the body back up. Rebend your front knee. Deep, deep lunge into the hips. Keep the legs. Inhale, reverse warrior. Moving right back into that side bend. Notice if you lost the bend in the front knee drive the knee forward and then see if you can reach back just a little more half bind or hand down the leg breathe fully here we have one more breath and then cartwheel both hands all the way back down to a lunge pick that back heel up again strong arms as you reach your left leg back to the ceiling for a three-legged down dog take a breath in and as you exhale, either right to down dog or move through your version of a Chaturanga Dandasana flow. Stretch the body out and down dog. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. One more breath here. And then drop down to your hands and knees. Come to a seat on the mat and extend your legs straight out in front of you. Done a lot for our hips, so we're gonna keep that theme going. You're gonna be nice and open here today. Open your legs to a straddle. So again, you'll find your range that works to open the inner thighs and hips without forcing. Some of you, it might feel better to keep the knees bent and slightly forward. Start with a tall spine, take an inhale. Then as you exhale, walk the hands forward, come towards a forward fold. So you'll pause where you need to pause. If you can go deeper, just allow yourself to work within your range. Relax your neck, soften your jaw, maybe even close the eyes so you can really tune into your breath right now. Allow the breath to be full and that the breath is moving again to any areas that need to soften and release. One more breath here. Good. And slowly walk your hands back in. We're going to sweep the legs all the way back together so you're at the top of your mat. Scoot your feet all the way forward so you have space to lie back. Now the legs can be straight or bent if that serves and supports the spine more. I'm going to lift the body tall, reach the arms forward, pull the low belly in, and as slowly as you can, curl down one vertebra at a time. Again, it might feel better to bend the knees here. Leave that up to you as slowly as you possibly can. Nice. And once you're on your back, I'd like you to hug your knees back into chest either wrapping around the tops or the backs of the thighs. And again, just those little rocks here, giving your spine a bit of a massage again. Come into a deeper twist now at the end of the practice. So open the arms out wide, drop both knees to the left. You could always put a pillow under the knees. That right shoulder might pop off the ground and just bring a softening back there. Let the head turn towards that right shoulder, if that's okay for your neck. And then allow your whole body to soften. Can you return to a slow, deep breath movement here? 
and feeling this nice release into your back. And then the deeper effects of a twist of rinsing out our body internally as well. One more breath on this side. And then slowly bring the knees back up. You can do one at a time just to support the spine better that way. And then move to the other side. Drop your knees to the right. If that sh left shoulder pops up, just bring a softening back down. It doesn't have to touch the ground. And maybe a pillow underneath your knees helps as well. Let the head fall towards left shoulder. Close your eyes here. And as we are winding down the class, moving back out of a physical practice, and back more to this internal connection and cultivating a deep relaxation. Steady, fluid breath. And then go ahead and unwind from your twist again. Pull both knees back into the chest. Wrap the arms around. This time, wrap around the tops of the shins. You're going to pull the knees closer to the body, and you will curl up this time, creating a tight little ball. Really give yourself a nice big hug. Take a breath in. And exhale, release, and open up into Shavasana. Let your legs extend out long and open up wide and completely relax. Let the arms fall away from your body with the palms facing up. Feel a nice opening to the chest and the heart. And then allow your entire body to soften, relax, and be completely still here. Allow your eyelids to soften, your focus to fall in, and to connect back to your breath. Allow your breath to be slower, softer, more internal, drawing your whole focus and energy inward. And then just feeling that any tension or stress, discomfort is dissolving out of your body, seeping into the earth beneath you. At the same time, just feel the essence of peace and light entering into your being. Allow yourself just to stay right here, right now. And very slowly begin to deepen your breath again. Bring a gentle reawakening back into your body and into your mind. Bring some movements to the fingers, the toes, ankles and wrists. And softly move your head side to side.
Stretch your body out into a full body stretch. Reach the arms back overhead. Reach the legs long. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Bend your knees and roll onto one side into a fetal pose by curling your knees towards your chest. Just taking a brief little pause here just to observe how you feel from this practice, this little reset you've given yourself. See if you can seal that in, carry it with you into the rest of your day. With your eyes closed, press yourself up to a seat. Join your hands together at your heart. Just feel a connection to your own heart. Nice lift of the spine, a softening to the shoulders. Together, let's take a deep breath through the nose. Open mouth, exhale. I like to close my practices with the sound of OM, which just creates a vibration that connects us all as one. And you're welcome to join me or just receive. A breath in to prepare. Oh. And then draw your hands to meet between the eyes, connecting your heart up to your higher mind. May we be guided more from our hearts than any ego-driven thoughts or actions. Let's honor the practice. Let's honor each other. Namaste. Thank you for joining class. Don't forget to put a rating after the class here. Appreciate it. <laughs> Have a beautiful day.